opposite of that. The reason that we protect the environment is because there's a spiritual connection. There's a, you know, there's a love that we have. We, you know, I got in the environment because I, I wanted, you know, this connection to the fishes and the birds and the wildlife and the, and the whales and, um, and the, the Purple Mountain's majesty. And that, you know, I understood that the way, you know, God talks to human beings through many vectors, through each other, through organized religion, through the great prophets, through the wise people, the, the great books of those religions, but nowhere with the kind of detail and texture and grace and joy as through creation. And when we destroy nature, we diminish our capacity to sense the divine, to understand who God is and what our own potential is and duties are as human beings. And that... I, I hope what you just said, by the way, is chopped up and put all over every social media platform in the world. <laughs> when we destroy nature, we degrade our own ability to experience the divine. Yeah, and that, that you know, it's not about quantifying stuff. That's oh. what the devil does. He quantifies everything, right? And that is, you know, what he wants us doing. Put a number on it. And the th reason we're preserving these things is not, is because we love our children, you know? And it's, it's because <laughs> we, we get, nature enriches us, it enriches us economically and spiritually and culturally and historically. It connects us to those 10,000 generations of human beings that were here before there were laptops. And it, you know, and it connects us to the, the most important spiritual lesson to every, every, all, all of the organized religions in, you know, that, that we know of today. The central revelation of every one of those religions always occurred in the wilderness. You know, Moses had to go into the wilderness to uh, to to listen to to hear God's voice and see the burning bush. He had to go to the wilderness of Mount uh, Sinai to get the commandments. Um, uh, Muhammad had to, who was a city boy from Mecca, had to go to the wilderness of Mount Hera on a camping trip with his kids and wrestle the angel Gabriel in the middle of the night to have the first stanzas of the uh, the surahs of the of the Quran squeezed from him. Uh, Buddha had to go into the wilderness to sit under the, you know, and wander for years and then sit under the Bodhigaya tree to get his first revelation of nirvana. And Christ had to spend 40 days in the wilderness to discover his divinity for the first time. And his mentor was John the Baptist, who lived in a cave in the Jordan Valley and ate honey of, of wild bees and locusts and, you know, and then all of Christ's parables come from nature. I'm the vine, you are the branches, the mustard seed, the little swallows, the scattering the seeds on the fallow ground, because that is where we sense the divine. God talks to us through the fishes, the birds, the leaves. They're all, you know, words from our creator. And that is why we preserve nature. Yes. It's not because of the, you know, it's not because the, it, you know, the quantity of carbon. And by the way, I feel what you said so deeply, I can hardly even express it. And thank you for saying that. And by the way, we, um, the best thing that you can do for climate is to is to restore the soils. <laughs> the soils are the solution to everything. The soil will absorb all that carbon. If, you know, if, and it'll absorb the water, it'll stop the flooding, it'll give us healthy food. And that's what our national policy has to be. It has to be restoring the soil. And that is, you know, everybody, listen, if you talk, if you want